Welcome to Hong Kong Brief. The content of the briefing includes India's cryptocurrency firms are ditching Silicon Valley for the dunes. Hong Kong tennis chief wants to add third elite event to city's sporting calendar. Hundreds of lizards seized in Australia police bust. Hong Kong helpers plight, Asia's election year, weekend reads you missed. Hong Kong stock slip, tech index hits 13-month low, on weak China outlook. India's cryptocurrency firms are ditching Silicon Valley for the dunes. South China Morning Post The Indian cryptocurrency industry is turning to Dubai's growing crypto ecosystem as a result of strict tax rules in India. Many Indian crypto firms are choosing to set up businesses in Dubai due to factors such as low taxes, ease of setting up businesses, regulatory clarity, and access to international markets. The Indian government has implemented high tax rates on cryptocurrency trading, which has led to a decline in trading volume of more than 90%. Indian traders are also facing a new 1% tax deducted at source on cryptocurrency transactions above 10,000 rupees. In contrast, Dubai offers a more favorable regulatory environment for crypto businesses and has attracted a number of Indian crypto companies. Dubai is positioning itself as a central hub for Web3 and has attracted a range of crypto companies from around the world. The UAE as a whole has a growing crypto economy and is becoming an attractive destination for crypto businesses. Hong Kong tennis chief wants to add third elite event to city's sporting calendar. South China Morning Post The president of Hong Kong's Tennis Association, Michael Ching Mingit, has suggested adding a WTA Tour 125 event to the city's sporting calendar, alongside the men's and women's Hong Kong Opens. Ching believes that hosting both indoor and outdoor tournaments would contribute to the development of the sport in the city. He highlighted New York, London and Paris as cities that currently stage tournaments in both environments, and asked why Hong Kong should be any different. Chung also believes that the association needs to do more to allow local players to benefit from high-level events, and ensure that the right tournaments are added to the schedule for the development of Hong Kong athletes. Hundreds of lizards seized in Australia police bust. BBC A criminal syndicate in Australia that planned to smuggle native lizards to Hong Kong has been dismantled by authorities. The reptiles, with an estimated market value of 1.2 million Australian dollars, $805,000, were seized by police and returned to the wild. Three men and a woman were arrested in Sydney, and they face charges including exporting native reptiles and participating in a criminal group. Hong Kong is a major hub for the illegal trade in exotic animals, with millions of live animals imported into the city every year. Hong Kong helpers plight, Asia's election year, weekend reads you missed. South China Morning Post The article provides a compilation of stories from last weekend's coverage of news across Asia and beyond. The stories include a star mathematician leaving the US for China, an overview of upcoming elections in Asia in 2024, Hong Kong unions advocating for safeguards for seriously ill helpers, overseas Taiwanese returning to cast their votes, and an explanation of what ultra-processed food is and why it is bad for us. Hong Kong stock slip, tech index hits 13-month low, on weak China outlook. South China Morning Post Hong Kong stocks continue to fall, with the Hang Seng Index down 0.9% at 16,385.72 following a 3% drop last week. The tech index also fell 2.4% to its lowest level since November 2022, while the Shanghai Composite Index dropped 0.8%. Concerns about a slowdown in the Chinese economy continue to weigh on the markets. Sevens coach Vilk targets Challenger Series quarterfinals for Hong Kong women. South China Morning Post Hong Kong's women's rugby team is aiming for a strong performance in the opening leg of the HSBC Sevens Challenger Series in Dubai, eyeing a place in the quarterfinals. 
While promotion to the Elite World Rugby 7 Series is beyond their reach this year, the team is hoping to build on their success from last season, which saw them earn a bronze medal at the Asian Games and qualify for the Olympic Games for Peshaj Tournament. Coach Andy Vilk has made minor adjustments to the team's operations following a review of his first few months in charge. Sleeping Giant India Awakening, Stymax says ahead of Asian Cup. Yahoo! India is definitely out of its slumber but must not expect too much at the Asian Cup, according to coach Igor Stymak. Cricket has long overshadowed football in India, but the national team, ranked 102nd in the world, qualified for the Asian Cup by winning all three of their qualifying games. Stymak, who has been in charge since May 2019, expects it to take another four years for India to reach the top 10 in Asia. Hong Kong's investment migration plan to provide big boost, official. South China Morning Post Hong Kong's new investment migration scheme, known as the Capital Investment Entrance Scheme, CIES, has received a positive response from wealthy families and high-net-worth individuals globally, according to Joseph Chan Ho Lim, Undersecretary for Financial Services and the Treasury. The scheme offers a faster route to residency for individuals who invest at least 30 million Hong Kong dollars, $3.84 million, in assets excluding residential real estate. The new CIES could bring in around 120 billion Hong Kong dollars per year to the stock, bond, fund, and private equity markets, boosting Hong Kong's role as a global family office and wealth management hub. Hong Kong employees demand 6% raise to work in office full-time. Bloomberg A survey conducted by Bloomberg Intelligence has found that Hong Kong workers would require a 6% pay rise in order to give up hybrid work arrangements. More than half of the respondents said they would either ask for a raise or switch jobs if they were required to work in the office five days a week. The survey of 350 people in the city suggests that companies may need to adopt hybrid work arrangements in order to attract talent while cutting office space. This could lead to a 6% decrease in office rents by 2024, according to Bloomberg intelligence analysts. The office sector in Hong Kong has seen little demand from mainland companies, contributing to falling rental prices. Asia stocks, mixed as focus, turns to inflation data, markets wrap. Yahoo! Asian stocks were mixed in largely directionless trading before a raft of inflation data this week that may give a better guide on the outlook for central bank policy. Japanese markets are shut for a holiday. Chinese star Shang calls Hong Kong open run most important of my life. South China Morning Post Chinese tennis player Shang Junqing has said that the Bank of China Hong Kong Open was the most important tournament he has ever played in. The 18-year-old reached the semifinals before being beaten by world number no. 5 Andre Rublev. Junqing said he was happy with his performance, having saved match points in previous rounds and won his first ever match against a top 20 player. He added that he now hopes to reach finals and win events but will need to work on playing long matches consistently. From Ola Electric to Tsinyao, here are the hottest Asian IPOs planned in 2024. Bloomberg Asia is expected to see a boost in initial public offerings, IPOs, in 2024, particularly in Hong Kong, India, Japan, and Indonesia. Alibaba Group Holdings Logistics Arm, Tsinyao, is set to have a high-profile IPO in Hong Kong, while other IPOs of a similar size are expected from ice cream and tea chain Mishiwe Bingqing and China Resources Holdings Bottled Water Unit. India's biggest electric scooter company, Ola Electric, is seeking to raise $661 million in its IPO, while Syngenta Group may attempt another listing in Shanghai after postponing its IPO in 2023. Hong Kong banks fight for deposits with 5% rates, air miles. Bloomberg Hong Kong banks are offering incentives, including air miles and fee waivers, to attract new customers as deposit rates are at their highest level in over a decade.
some lenders are paying as much as 5% a year on term deposits to win new money ahead of expected rate declines later this year. Total time deposits in Hong Kong stood at 9.29 trillion Hong Kong dollars, 1.19 trillion dollars, in November, a 24% rise from a year earlier, according to Hong Kong Monetary Authority data. Lack of foresight over New Year travel chaos bodes ill for Hong Kong. SCMP Opinion Hong Kong's government failed to manage the large crowds attending the New Year's Eve fireworks display, with many mainland visitors stranded at railway stations or delayed at the border for hours. The government has been criticized for a lack of foresight and for not being prepared for the influx of travelers. This has raised concerns about the government's credibility and ability to manage everyday tasks. To enhance the city's administration, the government needs to focus on reforming administrative processes and improving coordination between bureaus and departments. A poll with outsize importance, what to know about Taiwan's election. Al Jazeera. Taiwan is set to hold its presidential election on January 13, amidst concerns from the international community about the island's political status and its relationship with China. The election is of particular significance due to Taiwan's disputed political status, with the Chinese Communist Party, CCP, claiming sovereignty over the island. The two major political parties in Taiwan, the Kuomintang, KMT, and the Democratic Progressive Party, DPP, have alternated leadership every eight years since 1996, but this year the DPP's William Lai Ching Te is the front-runner. The outcome of the election will be closely watched by observers in the US and China to see whether Taiwan moves closer to Beijing or continues to align itself with the US. The presidential election in Taiwan is overshadowed by the bigger question of the island's political status, as events in Hong Kong have shown that Beijing does not keep its promises of autonomy. Taiwanese voters must decide whether they want closer ties with China, which could bring economic benefits but also risk regular Chinese aggression, or whether they want to maintain their independence and risk facing economic challenges. Turnout in recent elections has been high, with 74.9% of eligible voters participating in the 2020 election. The outcome of the election will have implications not only for Taiwan's security but also for its economic potential and risk. The main issues in the election include Taiwan's relationship with China, the economy, affordable housing, renewable energy, and military spending. The KMT blames Taiwan's stagnant economy on its poor relationship with Beijing, while the DPP has tried to strengthen ties with the US and other parts of the region. The KMT and the TPP have proposed the revival of the Cross-Strait Trade and Services Agreement, a trade treaty that would further liberalize trade and deepen Chinese investment in Taiwan. China regards the DPP as political separatists and has threatened military exercises in the Taiwan Strait if the DPP wins the election. That's all for today's news updates. Let's take a moment to recap what we've learned. First, we discussed how India's cryptocurrency firms are flocking to Dubai's growing crypto ecosystem due to strict tax rules in India. The high tax rates and new tax deductions have led to a decline in trading volume, prompting Indian crypto companies to set up businesses in Dubai, which offers a more favorable regulatory environment. Next, we talked about the president of Hong Kong's Tennis Association proposing the addition of a WTA Tour 125 event to the city's sporting calendar. The aim is to boost the development of the sport in Hong Kong and provide more opportunities for local players to benefit from high-level events. We also touched upon a police bust in Australia that dismantled a criminal syndicate planning to smuggle native lizards to Hong Kong. The reptiles, with an estimated market value of 1.2 million Australian dollars, were seized and returned to the wild. Moving on, we highlighted a compilation of news stories from last weekend, including a star mathematician leaving the US for China, an overview of upcoming elections in Asia, and Hong Kong unions advocating for safeguards for seriously ill helpers. In financial news, we mentioned that Hong Kong stocks continue to fall, 
with concerns about a slowdown in the Chinese economy weighing on the markets. We also discussed Hong Kong's new investment migration scheme, which has received a positive response from wealthy families and high net worth individuals globally. Shifting gears to the workplace, a survey conducted by Bloomberg Intelligence revealed that Hong Kong workers would require a 6% pay rise to give up hybrid work arrangements. This suggests that companies may need to adopt hybrid work arrangements to attract talent while cutting office space. In sports, we talked about Hong Kong's women's rugby team aiming for a strong performance in the HSBC Sevens Challenger Series, and India's football coach expressing optimism about the team's progress ahead of the Asian Cup. Moving on to upcoming IPOs, we mentioned that Asia is expected to see a boost in IPOs in 2024, particularly in Hong Kong, India, Japan, and Indonesia. Notable IPOs include Sinyao, the logistics arm of Alibaba Group Holding, and India's biggest electric scooter company, Ola Electric. We also discussed Hong Kong banks offering incentives to attract new customers as deposit rates reach their highest level in over a decade. Lastly, we touched upon the recent chaos during the New Year's Eve fireworks display in Hong Kong, which raised concerns about the government's ability to manage everyday tasks. We also highlighted the upcoming presidential election in Taiwan and its implications for the island's political status, security, and economic potential. That's all for today's news. Remember, your thoughts and questions are always welcome. So, what are your thoughts on today's news? Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.